Have you ever wondered how BMW's new TFT screen works? Well, stick around, because today we're going to show you some of the basic features and controls of this fantastic new screen. Hello, welcome back to Roy Pidcock BMW for Pidcock TV. My name is Tom Haynes, and today we're going to be showing you how to work the BMW TF2 screen. So we're going to run over just some of the basic features, some of the basic controls to help you get set up and make the most of the new dash. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is start off on the right hand side of the bars, which brings our attention to the modes button. Now, when I'm pressing the mode button, you can see in the top right hand corner, the mode selection box appears and then we have rain, road, enduro and eco. Now there is other riding modes available in this section, however we have to select those as we can only have four at a time. So when we get into the next section of the menu, I'll be able to show you where those are. Now just above the mode button, we have the heated grips and you'll see these appear just on the bottom there and it goes to two, one and zero. Two being your hottest, one being in the middle and then falling after zero or off as it may be. Now, as we move over to the right hand side of the bars, you can see the suspension button at the bottom there. And again, we have the two modes. So we have road and dynamic. Dynamic being your sportier, stiffer setup, and then the road in your standard sort of comfort mode. Now, when the engine's running, we can also press this button and then hold. Obviously it won't show us at the moment because we don't have the engine running, but that will change from auto to min and max suspension travel. So if you want to jack the end up a little bit more, or if you fancy it just a little bit lower, we can do that in there. Okay, so now we've gone through the controls on the handlebars. The last one brings our attention to the menu button. Now at the top of the menu button, you can see the little arrow pointing upwards. Now if we press this arrow, you can see at the top there, we have our fuel gauge, the odometer, trip one, our average consumption, tire pressure and then this brings us back to our, our range so there is other things we can add in here which come into the menu i've kept it nice and simple for the moment so we can just scroll through as we see again those key bits of information that we may require now when we see to the bottom of the menu button it correlates with the little arrow that we have here we press that menu button which takes us in to our main menu and what i'm doing here is using the wheel at the side to scroll left and right as we're going through. However, for this one, we want to get into my vehicle. So as you can see, there's an arrow there. We can press the arrow on the menu button to take us into it. And now we can see our trip computer. Now, if you ever see this arrow pointing at the bottom there, that means we can press the menu button at the bottom to take us in for more information. Now on this occasion, it's where we would reset all the values. So I'm gonna swipe left to get out. And again, carry on swiping left and right for the various pieces of information. So we have in here my vehicle, the onboard computer, the trip computer that we've just seen. We have our tire pressure on there. The service due, obviously this is a brand new bike that's never been on the road, so we've got the service message there. But then we can come out of it. Again, this bike's not been plugged in, so this isn't accurate. And then to come out of this, we will press the top of the menu button, which will take you on the main menu and then we're going to scroll over across to the settings okay so this next section brings us on to the settings of the bike so again we're going to press the bottom of the menu button which again correlates with the button there so we go into there and the first thing we're going to see is vehicle settings so again up and down however in these sub menus we are going to use the wheel to swipe into to each one so as i mentioned previously we have the driving mode selections so you can only have four at a time. So let's get rid of Eco. We'll scroll down to Dynamic. Select Dynamic there. And then we can carry on with the modes that we've got there. So what we need to do is swipe left to come back out. And then we can go down to Light Settings. We can change the Hill Start Control on there should we want to. But I will leave that as it is for the moment. So I've just pressed the top of the menu button to bring us back to the main menu. But what we're gonna do is, again, press the bottom and go down to the connections. And this is the part where we're gonna start connecting 
our mobile phone or Bluetooth devices. So we go into connections, again swipe it in, mobile device, and then it will be pair new mobile device. So I've got my phone next to me here, Tom's iPhone. We're gonna swipe to the right again, and then it's gonna find my phone. So as you can see, it's come up with a pair. So we'll pair it there, accept it on the bike by swiping the wheel to the right again. We're gonna allow on the phone, and now it's just having a think about it. And there we are, we're connected. Now, if you have things like the, you know, the Bluetooth connections for the helmet, we can get on there and connect it through there. And also you can connect your passenger's helmet through there. But in this stage, we don't have that. So what we're gonna do is swipe left to come out. We're gonna roll down to the display, swipe right in, and then the status line content, which was the line at the top. We can roll down here and choose the bits we want. So we can have rest breaks in there. We can have some trip one, trip two, if you want that on there. This is where you'd customize that top line. But we're gonna swipe out, swipe out again, and then just show you rolling up and down the settings on there. So I'm gonna press the top of the menu button to come into the main menu. and then we're gonna swipe across there. Now you may have seen the navigation button. So the, at the moment, the navigation button is greyed out. There is a BMW Motorhead app that you need. Right, it's, I need to download it. <laughs> it's, it's just doing it now. Okay, so now we're back on the main screen. We can see the navigation icon has now lit up. If we swipe over using the wheel to the media and the telephone, they are yet to light up, but as soon as you connect a rider's helmet system, they will also light up. But for the moment, we're gonna press the bottom of the menu button and get into that navigation. And as you can see, this is used for a very basic sat-nav, and it'll just give you a bit of direction on where to go. Now, you will need the BMW app for this to work, which is available in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. And what I'm gonna do is press the top of the menu button to bring us back to the main screen. Now, you may have seen a little white box light up there with a 40 in it. That little box is the speed limit of the road you're on at that time. So it's using your phone and the, the BMW app to transfer that information to the bike. But if you do see that, there, yeah, that is what it's doing. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial video. I hope it's helped. If you do have any questions or you'd like to see some more videos, please drop your notes in the comments below. And remember to like, subscribe and come for a ride.